And good afternoon. You're tuned into your radio station, Radio Park, the 95.1 FM. It's time for a peekaboo segment. As promised, we have in studios with us two wonderful guests. I can't tell you who they are as yet. It's going to be the first and foremost person is a special person. Somebody who is no stranger to Bartigo. By voice and by action, motion, and everything else you can think about. I can't give you the old name, but I'll give you the designation. Public Relations Officer for the Guyana Police Force. And I'm going to let him introduce himself this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Stan Novaya. And yes, I am here in my capacity as the Public Relations Officer of the Corporate Communications Unit of the Ghana Police Force, which is basically the public relations arm of the Ghana Police Force. We're here on one of our ex uh, outreach exercises, and uh, well, this is uh, practically the, the last and final of the regions uh, that the Ghana Police Force has, uh, what you see, divided the country in, and be able to have commanders and ranks under them who are actually working to give citizens service and protection. So we're here to, uh, to, to, to inter interact with them and to get a first-hand idea as to what is happening on the ground, and it's pretty good so far. And you have been across the township of Bartikadis through your discourse today, right? Correct. And what have you observed? Well, particularly as it relates, it's a quiet, it's a quiet place. Uh, at least so far uh, during the day, um, and uh, there are a lot of adherence, given the fact that we have COVID uh, in the air, and the pandemic, as we know, in the last uh, couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, last month was one of our deadliest months, um, and whilst that is ravaging, what we're seeing, um, which I like very much, is that people are adhering to uh, the masking, uh, mandatory masking that is um, in, being enforced, and uh, there seems to be the, the distancing that is happening because as we go around in the shopping districts, you are not seeing people clustered up as much as in maybe other some certain parts of the country. So I think that they're paying attention to that. And that's one of the first things that jumped out. And I say relatively quiet, not because people might not necessarily be in a celebratory mood, but this is one of the regions uh, where Kudos to the command and his team. Uh, you don't get much reports of any kind of serious crimes that occur. So that's why I said peaceful. The people are relatively peaceful, and if any disputes, it is re usually resolved amicably. So it's not giving the police that much work in, in this region. Well, as we have our commander of region number seven, None other than Assistant Superintendent Dion Moore with us this afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, Commander? Uh, good afternoon, Seattle. Thank you for having me. I'm fine, thank you. Enjoy the wonderful day in the peace of coming to the bar. For now, because, Commander, I know you're a man who wears many hats and is always on the ball with your arms in the field. Tell me a little bit about your course field exercise that jump started the initial sensitization and aggressive sensitization within Region Number 7 for the month of May? My first job start exercise was getting to the public. Getting to the public and to, send, to have those business owners who are having these engagements where persons are permitted to socialize, especially at bars, up to the 9.30 period. Even though we know that they, they are allowed to have patrons up to 9.30 with a six feet spacing, um, four portions to table. We do find from time to time the crowd must be more and they are not in keeping with those uh, requirements. I had an engagement with the owners and ever since they have since started to comply. Coupled with that, I engaged Dr. Sibala, our regional health officer. As well, we had um, the ranks who are stationed within close proximity of Article. We had a discourse with them. Have we recognized there were some of them who had a negative view about the taking of the COVID 19 vaccine? And we have since encouraged those rounds to have the vaccine taken. To date, I've started seeing some of them going and having the vaccines after the discussion. It is a plus for us. A couple of that, I've noticed as recent as from last week to now, many persons who you had to patrol and 
let them know that it's time for them to close. They no longer have to do that. And our enforcement drive by day and by night. These are more important that go before the court. And by doing that, along with the residents within Bartico, we are somewhat pleased and most of them are complying now. And that is good to hear. Because in addition to the COVID-19 regulations, Commander, I've noticed that a lot of narcotics have been caught by the Agada Police Force or the Bartico office and the Itabali office. So tell me a little bit of what more, because remember, it's not only the enforcement of the COVID-19 guidelines. You guys also deal with petty crime. You deal with narcotics. You do investigations. You mediate when families, even though, God forbid, you guys need more. I will advocate, and I'm advocating right now. Hopefully that that raising pay will come very soon because you go above and beyond. And you're one of our frontline workers. How do you manage all of this? Well, I'm happy that you uh, recognize the fact that the police, not just me, but the police in general, do so much, so many things, and wear so many caps. Um, it's easy. You have to have good staff. And I believe in my staff. We are very supportive. Kudos to them. Hard work can be good, but when you have team effort, it's wonderful. It brings success. And all the success that we're having is because of proper coordination, planning, and execution. It's not just you just pick up someone, you choose how high to support it. In the sense that you look at a man's skill and the quality that he possess, and you put him to do the task that he can get done. Now, equally, our region presently, we are experiencing a 30% decrease in serious crimes, which are more is a decrease. Um, Robbery and arms decreased again, um, with the exception of rape. We've noted that rape, we are on the increase in terms of rape. Only recent, uh, three days ago, there was an incident, which is on the investigation, but not that it was information, but it's on the investigation. One suspect is in custody. And that is all Bartitians like to hear, because we want to see the action of the police department. And so far, Commander, you have been delivering. Now, is there some advice that you can share to the general public, male and female, as it relates to taking themselves out of harmful or dangerous situations as it relates to rape? Um, when you look at the, the, the persons or the victims of rape, many of times or in many instances, those victims um, have had sex sometime prior. It's not a case that they um, spot on, they've been raped. And it's on the eight sex. The last instance we had, yes, it was a case where someone tried to solicit a taxi service and eventually she got raped. Um, be cognizant of your surroundings. Um, try to use, use services for persons who, who you are aware of. If you can get a family, friend, or relative to take you home or take you places even better, uh, try to socialize people who you trust and it will help. You can contact the police force on the 911 system, and for Bartica, yeah, there is a number that always available, 455-2222. You could get, and during the day, you can contact uh, my office at 455-2238, or have my direct contact, 680-6969. You can call me, and rest assured, you will get assistance. And I know, Commander, you're one of the persons that I admire when it comes to your professional capacity. And you're a man that sticks to your word. You were one of the first persons within Region Number 7 to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Tell me, how was that experience for you? That experience was very wonderful. Honestly speaking, I didn't feel any side effects um, right away or even after. Even now, I would say to any person who wants to take the COVID vaccine, do so. It's nothing difficult. Um, my only advice to them is if you're going to have the, the, the vaccine, ensure that you eat something before. Thank you very much. We were just hearing from Commander Moore. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us a veteran of not only media and communication services, somebody who relates to people who goes on the ground and does everything in his power to ensure that everything is safe. Now, Stan, this capacity or this new portfolio, how has it been for you? I know it's a walk in the park. Well, that's why I asked. I was really <laughs> Actually, it's a, it, you, you, you learn every day. And uh, definitely, I'm working in the uh, security sector now. Uh, and this is particularly as it relates to security of our country uh, by the Ghana Police Force. So 
we definitely would have had to hit the ground running, but also it's a learning experience. And these outreaches that uh, we are conducting as the unit, because uh, it's not an individual thing, it's everyone of, of, of the officers and ranks in the unit who are getting a chance to understand what you know police are going through so that as they write, as they report, and as we put uh, the information in the public domain, there's a, a totally different understanding, more so personalized, an appreciation for what uh, police uh, ranks and officers go through on a daily basis across the country. I just heard you making some kudos uh, to the commander, and I wanted to actually say that these are the kinds of things that and the kinds of stories that need to be a little bit more public. These are the things that people need to understand. That lots of times uh, police men and women are going beyond, above and beyond, and there's usually no thanks or no acknowledgement of it by the very same people they have sworn to serve and to protect. The sad thing is that everyone has their own preconceived notions, and lots of times they see someone in the blue and black and it's a derogatory comment that they have or a perception that they bear and as such they react with. And those are some of the things that definitely have to change because many of them may not say publicly that they would have experienced the professionalism and the courtesy from some of our men and women in uniform. But they will seek to highlight if it is that they feel, in some cases, that they have been wronged. I mean, you, you feel that you are wrong, but then instead of dealing with the issue, what well, they deal with is personality. Uh, and as you rightly mentioned, there's so much that the police are doing, and particularly in this region, we will highlight. We will let people know, because another thing that I will know only this morning I mentioned when we had our meeting is that Many persons, uh, myself included, who are living on the coastline, tend to forget that Guyana is 83,000 square miles and that Georgetown is not Guyana. There's so much more to Guyana. And so whatever experiences or preconceived notions they particularly have with police, men and women on the coast, they automatically translate it throughout the country. And going for ourselves across the regions, we see that there's a difference. There's more respect, collaboration. Like in this case, uh, the, the, the commander was able to, uh, to speak with the business community, get them on board about being able to adhere to the COVID uh, uh, guidelines and uh, the, the necessary uh, requirements that they have to have in place. In some other areas, it might have been a little bit more difficult. And then if it is that you have to find someone or they are charged and brought before the courts, then they try to make it a whole negative. And in many cases, the truth be told, particularly in this COVID uh, situation, the pandemic, police have taken on the role of, to some extent, uh, the medical people. Because police are working as educators to go out and to talk to people about the harmful effects of COVID and how to protect themselves. And in some cases, providing uh, citizens with masks, sanitizers, and the whole nine yards. And it is because I don't think there are many people who have wrapped their heads around the fact that you are putting yourself and others at risk of dying. Part of the motto of the, the police, or, or as a matter of fact, the slogan is protection, service and protection, right? And now realizing that you've got to be able to protect some people from themselves. They are harmed to themselves more than anything else. And that's the role that the police have taken on. And it certainly is not easy. And I like the fact that the, 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 the town has sought to honor, in their own small way, our men and women in uniform as frontline workers. Hit bar ticket this morning, one of the first things that I saw that brought to the commander's attention, which of course he knew, because he sees it, is that huge billboard uh, given paying tribute to the policemen and women who they deem as frontline workers. And it is unique and special because I haven't seen that in any other region. Right? And uh, many times the police go on 
unnoticed, unannounced, unrewarded. And I kind of want to endorse your, uh, your, your call for not only the increase in salaries or benefits, but definitely um, for more recognition and more collaboration, because that's the thing. Once you have more collaboration with uh, the business community and with citizens, it will help to reduce some of the incidents that many of us are so fearful of that we have to pick up the phone and call 911 or to call the commander's number. Those incidents can be reduced. And we can be every quarter possibly, the commander could always report to you, we've seen another reduction in crime. Well, I'm happy to report this afternoon that actually today on Let's Talk Health, the traffic department, thank you to Inspector Polk and Sergeant Noel, they continually send information into us that every week they send little tidbits on what people could do because in addition to all the other things that we've been talking about, we also try to inform persons for road safety because road safety is something with and without the curfew we still have to worry about. Now this afternoon, I know listeners, let me say hello to everyone because we are going to be talking about the township of Bartica as it relates to COVID-19. And this is because Bartica is identified as a hotspot in the air right now. For the month of May, we can safely say we have over 100 positive cases and active cases right now in the township. And it's not a joke, it's not anything for somebody to feel nice about, because we need to have more adherence. And the only way that we can do that is through vaccination. So we've been advocating with the commander's help and the Regional Health Emergency Committee. As of this week, we've started sensitization where the regional chairman, regional executive officer, regional vice chairperson, the representative for the Prime Minister's office, a number of other, including the officer in charge at the Barter Police Station, walked along the lines, sharing flyers and doing all of these things. What else is there do you think that we should do? Well, speaking from a personal capacity, I believe that one of the things that has to happen is a little bit more of the marketing strategy uh, primarily focusing on busting of myths because especially our young people too they uh, have a whole lot of theories uh, that originate from the anti backers who come up with so many issues about so many people that might have died or gotten ill after taking a vaccine you've heard things like well there's they intend to plant a chip in you all things that are not true and I think one of the things that we can do is start addressing some of those myths and busting it. As, as opposed to like saying, this is the, the, the myth, this is the fact. Because I think one of the things that happens, and rightly so, there are those who are worried because over the years, non-white people have had some negative experiences with the medical industry. Not just... Uh, in the US, but even in other countries that are Caribbean in nature and in other parts of the world. It's those kinds of things also that give some people some hesitation. But like, kudos to the commander, I believe some of our leaders, more and more, have to publicly demonstrate that they have taken a vaccine and it is safe, which can influence others. So that's a, you bust myths, and then you also have others who would have taken the vaccine, publicly state that they have taken it, indicate whether or not they have side effects. I took uh, the vaccine. I took, all two, <coughs> excuse me, I took all two of my uh, doses. And the truth be told, in the first instance, I took the first, uh, the first uh, dose. I merely remember that I ate as if there was no tomorrow. That was my side effect, the first day. A little pain at the, the point of our injection for the first day. But before midday, we took it early in the morning. Before midday, I'd eaten three times. And then you had a little later on in the evening, kind of tiredness, so we went to sleep work. The second time we took the vaccine, practically forgot uh, some of the uh, three things that you were supposed to do, which is like eating, not taking certain, um, uh, 
medications and so on, but still no effect. Um, the second day after the second dose, extreme tiredness um, and a slight headache, I do recall, yeah. And then by the third day, it was like back to business again. And uh, so I'm fully vaccinated and I'm not ashamed to say that. As a matter of fact, I, I put up and I put the experience on my Facebook page uh, and I showed uh, the day that I got vaccinated, what is the vaccine I took. I think some of our people also, because you've got to understand, for those of us who watch cable and so on, is that around the world there is obviously uh, an interest in vaccine and getting the rights. And so what you find is that there's more promotion of certain vaccines, and like the vaccines that are available in Ghana, because people are not seeing it, splashing across their TV screens when they watch certain international news channels. A little doubtful is like, uh, oh, cyber farm, oh, check uh, Russia vaccine. You know, you get, these are the talks that you get. But these vaccines are shown to have a high efficacy than some of the ones that are being promoted by some of the other countries. And it's all well and good. All different countries are working on developing our vaccines. And what Guyana has done is based on where they could source it. And we knew this from before that what was going to happen was that when uh, the AstraZeneca would have developed their vaccine, Moderna and, and the others, Johnson and Johnson and so on, they knew that what was going to happen is that the wealthy countries were going to snap up most of what was there. And uh, the countries that are not so wealthy will still be in a struggle. Now, those countries, and rightly so, they're, str they're, they're scrambling to make sure that they protect their, their citizens. That's first and foremost of them. So what happens? You have to wait because there's some pecking order. There are other countries that have been producing vaccines. After the necessary tests, it's found to be safe, and they were given their, uh, the green light. And Ghana has been sourcing, like many other countries, have been sourcing from those countries uh, where they could get the available vaccine. And like the commander and like many other police officers that I know who have taken the vaccine, we're still working, we feel quite fine, and we see no problem. And I think, as you rightly said, Sienna, that is, that is the next step that people need to go at. Because unlike some of the other countries, we are now at the age of 18 and, and above mm -hmm. who can take the vaccine. Recently we learned that some of the young people who are going, they have not gone back to their second shot. And uh, they're not realizing that that can hamper them because it requires a second shot to make sure that you're fully inoculated. And even if it is that you feel that your system is strong, you can still get the COVID. The difference is when you're fully vaccinated, the chances of dying are far less. And the chances of also passing it to a family member or someone in your household who has underlying conditions that could cause them to be hospitalized and subsequently die, those chances are reduced. And it also means the more of us to become inoculated, the faster our country could really go back to normal. Thank you very much. And before we go this afternoon, is there any other information or anything you'd like to say to our general public? Because we focused on Bartika the township, but we're also being heard not only in Region 10, you found out Gosh in Riversview, Camp Macquarie in Region 3, and then we head into the Batavia Cayuni District, Sharifa Crossing, and all the way from Paro to Itabal. <laughs> See, unfortunately, yes. tomorrow we'll get a glimpse of all those areas on a few trip. We did some today, but we'll do some tomorrow, mm -hmm. most of them tomorrow. Fortunately, we went to Sharifa today. Mm -hmm. Not Tomorrow we'll be the people. <laughs> Listeners, you heard it here first on Radio Bartica 95.1 FM. We have none other than our Ghana Police Force Communications Officer Stan Gavaya in region number seven. So give him a warm welcome when he visits tomorrow. <laughs>